So, welcome back. We have been looking at description logic or description logics and let us look at uh, some statements we can make in description logics. So, remember that description logics are logics of noun phrases. So, basically they allow us to describe noun phrases essentially and uh, of course, relations between concepts um, when we move on to sentences essentially. But when we are talking about concepts, we can say for example, that eager students is the intersection of those who are eager and those who are student essentially. Basically, it is an intersection this thing. This is a union buses or cars we can say by saying if we know the concept, if we have the concept of bus, if we have the concept of car, then we can define a concept of buses or car. If we have things which are electric, we can say not electric essentially. So, this is semantic in the sense that we are defining primitive concepts and we are defining new concepts from primitive concepts. Simply saying in first order logic that we have a predicate called eager student x does not mean anything. In first order logic, uh, a predicate name is meaningless essentially in that in the sense that the interpretation depends upon you. What do you mean by that predicate? What particular subset of the domain you are talking about? But in description logics, we define some primitive concepts and then define new concepts in terms of those concepts. And we assume that the primitive concepts are defined in some namespace. So, if, if so, it should be clear to anyone who is reading that um, document as to what, what is it we are talking about. So, the meaning of a predicate or a concept still comes from the user essentially in some sense, except that the idea is in using RDF is to have a shared vocabulary and that is the key essentially that everyone knows that what is it that we are talking about. So, if you wanted to say the set of people, let us say people are the ones who own cars or the set of individuals who owns only electric cars, then we can use the for all owns and this is the class from which the whatever they own comes from essentially. If you want to say a person who owns electric cars, that means at least one electric car the person has. So, first of all, it must be a person and there must be at least one electric car that the person owns. Someone who owns something that has a battery. So, owns something. So, that something corresponds to this concept here and that something is something that has a battery. So, it has a part which is a battery. So, we can we had said that if you use the statement that uh, I am defining a concept car as a subset of this concept. This concept is says that it has at most four wheels and sorry at, at least four wheels and at most. So, this is at most. So, at most four wheels and at least four wheels then we can define it, but we cannot really use it, uh, but we cannot say that something is a car. We can say that I am defining this concept car which has exactly four wheels, but on the other hand if we say equivalence, then we are saying that cars have four wheels and also the things with four wheels are cars. So, we are defining a two way relationship here and in that sense now we have defined what is a car. You show me some description and I can 
say that yes this is a set car and that is what we do when we do in this process of kind of classification essentially you define a concept using other concepts and then you know where it sits in the taxonomy so if you want to say students attend lectures so the right hand side here says the set of individuals who at least attend who attend at least one lecture basically and students are basically those people who at attend at least one lecture lectures are those things which are attended by students so it's the inverse of the attendance rule basically and that lectures and students are disjoint can be said using this relation so we can talk about the domain uh, of this attend rule so we can say that by specifying if there is something that is a role filler for attends from the whole domain it must be a subset of students which is basically saying that the that only students attend something the domain of the role attends remember that attend is a role which goes from students to lectures students attend lectures so the domain of attends is students and the range of attends which can be seen because of the inverse role here is a lecture so anything that is attended is a lecture basically if you don't want to use the inverse role we can al also say that uh, in the entire domain which is the top concept if anyone attends anything then that must be a lecture so for all attends it must be a lecture that's another way of saying that the range of attend role is a lecture essentially and we have already seen that you know we can have inverse roles and things like that so attends and attend inverse and we can define a uh, role uh, uh, has parent as a inverse of role has child so has child says that somebody who has a child the inverse of that is somebody who has a parent we also spoken about grandchild so has child composed with has has child as a grandchild so you can think of this as is a in some sense because you are saying for all x something 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 implies something else essentially those with grandchildren who are all doctors we can say it either by saying all those individuals who have a child who have a child who is a doctor essentially or we can say all those individuals who have a grandchild who is a doctor essentially remember that they don't have to have children essentially but if they had a children then all the children would have a children but they don't have to have and if they had then it would be a doctor so you just need to you know sort out what i just said but essentially what i was saying was that it can be vacuously true either at this level or at this level essentially but if the child exists then the child better be a doctor this simply says that at most two grandchildren brothers are siblings sisters are siblings it's a sub role that we have already spoken about we can say that the sibling role is symmetric by saying that the inverse role is also the same role essentially or it's transitive is that if you compose the sibling role then you will have another has sibling role but you can also be careful and say that uh, it's an irre irreversible so irreflexive uh, rule essentially that you can't be your own sibling essentially so let's just make a mention of the fact 
that when you talk about logic in general, we are talking about the open world assumption and which is also true for description logics essentially. So, supposing we make the statement that Lucy likes apples and oranges and there is no other information about her likes and dislikes. Can we conclude that she likes only fruits? So, we know that she likes apples, we know that she likes oranges, but does that mean that she likes only fruits? It really depends upon, the answer to this really depends upon whether you are working with an open world assumption or whether you are working with a closed world assumption. So, if the information is stored in a database, then the query list those who like only fruits will return Lucy. That is because of the closed world assumption which says that we know everything that we could know about Lucy essentially. So, remember it is the language prologue that we studied essentially. That also uses the closed world assumption and we had this notion of negation by failure there essentially. So, the similar thing applies to this here. But if we say in logic that Lucy likes only fruit or description logics, this will not return true and we will see uh, this when we look at the reasoning algorithm for uh, description logic later. So, our data database works with a snapshot of the data and assumes that a snap snapshot is complete. So, we know everything that is needs to be known. Whereas, FOLDL looks at all possible worlds that there can be things that we have not mentioned there and uh, it could be possible that she likes for example, mobile phones essentially. We have not mentioned it here, but it is possible essentially. So, a statement like Lucy likes only fruits would be false in such a case. We will also look at uh, something called default. Uh, uh, reasoning as we go along, uh, where you can draw conclusions even in an open world scenario, but the conclusions can be revised later and such conclusions are called defeasible conclusions. So, we will stop here and then look at the reasoning method that we use in description logic and that the reasoning method is known as the tableau method. We will do that in the next session.